So what is a FICO score? Basically, let's start with what the bureaus are actually doing. The bureaus are trying to gather information about your past creditors. In theory, they're looking to gauge your credit worthiness. And they do that by talking to all of the creditors you've had in the past. So I like to equate this to why your credit score and credit profile is a lot like your dating history. So think of it in terms of that. If you're applying for, let's say, a mortgage, that's a long-term commitment. These days, mortgages last often a lot longer than the actual marriage does itself. So it's a pretty good analogy. So you're looking to get a mortgage. And in this town, and in many towns, you're looking for a pretty significant size mortgage, something over half a million dollars or so. That's a, a real commitment. So before jumping into a boat like that, the lender is going to want to see how you did on your past relationships. I'm going to pick on you because I already know you. So basically what they're going to do is say, how were her relationships? Was she nice? Was she a good dancer? Was she a good kisser? Did she remember your birthday? Did she say mean things about your mom? And say you're going to be just like her. Probably, I'm sure you probably did. So at any rate, they're gonna tally those things up and say, you know, here's how many bureaus, you know, this company, the creditors, they talk to this number, this number, this number. And it's important to note that not every bureau is gonna reflect every one of the creditors you've ever had. They just don't. So for example, Equifax is one of the bureaus. They may only talk to three of your past creditors. TransUnion will talk to four. Experian maybe talks to five of them. They're going to get a different picture of you, right? Depending upon which ones they talk to, which one of your exes they talk to. And you're like, I hope they don't talk to that one. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they probably talk to one of them at least. But the reason is, how many bureaus does a creditor have to report to? Do you have any ideas? Guess. Guess a number. There's, there's, base, there's three main bureaus. How many of those bureaus do they have to report to? They have to report to zero. It's not mandatory. It's a service they pay for the right to do. So it costs them money to report to each bureau. So they don't always report to all the three bureaus. If you're talking a major institution, like some type of Visa card, they probably do report to all three bureaus. But something smaller may not actually report to all three. They report to one. So then that gives a different picture. So again, Kelly, can I enlist your, your services to, to write on the board? You're going to become my Vanna for today. Spin the wheel. My handwriting is so horrific, it really looks like I'm writing with my feet. So if you want this to be legible, I, I'll need the, the services of Kelly. Let's grab it and write on this side here. You're going to write down the three bureaus. So again, the bureaus are Equifax, Experian. and TransUnion. Those are the three big bad ones. Are there others out there? Yes, dozens of them. Do they matter when you're looking to apply for any type of financing in America? Not at all. So I only will mention these three. And now, if you could write up here, basically, this is a little complex and it's a lot of information for an underwriter to look through. So in the 1950s, two gentlemen got together and decided to create a system that will, instead of having to have an underwriter look at all of your ex-boyfriends and see how they were and what they're saying about you, they could basically just look at a score, almost like a grade, and basically say, this, this is how this person ranks and whether they meet your system or not. So that is FICO, so FICO, which stands for the Fair Isaac 
Corporation. Bill Ferrer and Earl Isaac formed this in 1954 out in California. And it is now the number that determines how much you're gonna pay for everything and whether or not you qualify. So the FICO range is going to be from 350 on the low end. So if you have a 350 score, your mother hangs up on you when you call. You are like LeBron James after he just announced he was leaving Cleveland. You're, you're not cool, you're not popular. Now on the high end of that is an 850, so if you could write in the range for 350 to 850. An 850 is someone who is beloved by all. God came down from the heavens, did a lightning bolt inscription of their credit score on a tablet, it was carried down the mountain, and it's praised by all. Nobody has an 850 score. Nobody has an 850 score. Now, what is considered good has changed throughout time. Back in the proof of life days where it's like, oh, they got a pulse, they got a desire. If you got above a 620, you were considered a paper. Now, the ranges are a little different. If you're looking to obtain financing for a house, which is particularly relevant to your industry, you have to have a 660 minimum FICO score. And now I should expand upon that to say you have to have a 660 minimum middle FICO score. So what is a middle FICO score? And if you could write out three examples here beneath that. If someone were to have a 690 for their Equifax score, we'll call it. And then they were to have a 720 for Experian and then 800 for their TransUnion. That would be very high. That would mean that all of their exes have nothing but great things to say about them, which is true for most of this group, right? You're in the, you're the 800. So now, a variance like this is very common. Because again, remember, they're talking to different people and getting a different perspective about you. They may be telling each bureau a different story. There may be erroneous, inaccurate information on there. So how do lenders determine the middle out of these three? They literally just take the one in the middle and call that your FICO score. That's a very advanced, complicated system. I'm sure that some Ivy League person really came up with. But all they do is just go, oh, we're gonna pick the one in the middle here. And that's you. No matter what the other reports say, that is your FICO score, 720 in this case. Even though there's a variance of 110 points. Do they ask why there's a variance of 110 points? No. Nope. They just say, this is that. Now that score determines whether you qualify. And if so, how much you pay for that one. 